Good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to April, the first of two new member Q&A Zoom sessions. Um, I'm Betsy Coe, and uh, below me is Steve Greenwood, who's co-hosting. Yeah, in, in, <laughs> you're, you're to my you know, in, in Streamwood, <laughs> Streamyard, Stream. you have to you have to like mirror what you're doing. I thought I was being so clever, but. Zoom is different. Yes, um, I'm Stephen Greenwood. Thanks for coming to this event. Yep. And oh, I have another person coming in. Yeah. Linda. Um, we have, um, great. And I think maybe Linda was the other person I was, we were expecting. Um, so what we're gonna do tonight, um, we're gonna just start off by looking at a, a profile together. Um, I picked it at random. Um, it's um, so it's an I picked an American profile, and um, because oftentimes um, you know that's where our research is centered, and um, it's not it's not in. It's a good profile. It's solid, but it's not you know like over the top overwhelming. Um, so, you know, this is, this is the sort of profile that one could aspire to, um, for starters. And, um, and then after that, um, Richard will, um, will, will have some questions. We'll look at his profiles. Um, Linda, Linda, are you Linda Fett? Yes, I am. Fetty. Oh, great. Yes. Great. Okay. I, I looked up Civil War stickers for you, and I know you have questions. And anyone else who has questions, um, please feel free to put those in the chat, and um, we will monitor them and make sure we get, get to everything. Um, so I'm going to share my screen. Um, share screen. Okay. And the person that we're going to look at uh, for starters I is, didn't do that. is Josiah Knight. Oh, we have a new person that's coming in. Yep. Mare or Mare will be joining us. Okay, wonderful. Um, welcome, Mare. Um, so um, you may or may not see this box at the top of profiles. Um, I, you would only see it if you had the WikiTree browser extension added on to whatever browser you're using, Chrome or Safari. Um, and um, it's really, it has so many fantastic features. And this is just a really fun one. So I can see that, aha, Josiah is my sixth cousin, six times removed, and it tells our, our common ancestry. So it's, it's really fun that way. Yeah, there's a nice shorthand instead of having to go through and hit connections. It's just right there for you. Right, right. And it does expand too. You can hit the more button and it actually shows the relationship breakdown. Right, right. Well, I can do that there. Mm. Oh, going back to 29th oh, grade. There's a lot more shared ancestors. <laughs> so. Um, so this is um, Josiah's um, profile um, is, very complete. Oh, Judy we will have, be joining us. Yep. We have a birth date and specific place, although this uh, the profile manager had marked this as uncertain. I wonder why. I'm not sure. Um, but we have parent parent names, um, both of which, of course, as you know, if we they're hyperlinked. So if I click on these, I would go to just Josiah's father. Um siblings um, and not just um, spouse, but also marriage date and location. So that means that we must have a, a marriage record somewhere in the sources list. Um, children and specific uh, death date and, loca and uh, locations. Um, we can see here, um, by the way, it's it's easy to overlook this little section, but it's good to note uh, profile manager. And if you have questions, it, you know, right here, you click right there to send a private message. Um, you can also see when it was created and last time some changes were made to it. So you know, this profile hasn't gotten some love for 
for about a about 15 months. Um, Andy will be joining us now. Great. Okay. And this is a, a sort of a bare bones biography. Um, Steve, which which mm -hmm. is the what there's something um that will gener auto generate a biography. Um is it is it B? Oh. WikiTree B? Uh, Wiki, I believe WikiTree B has a, a bio generator. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, WikiTree will automatically generate one regardless if you just right. provide it basic information and don't type in a biography. Mm -hmm. It'll still say, you know, X person was born in this year and died in that year. So mm -hmm. that's like the, the very basic bio that it'll create. And obviously, I, I make sure that all my profiles are a little bit more, uh, you know, enlarged and exaggerated than that. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you wanted to use uh yeah that browser extension or or that that wiki tree b which is something you can download uh and, and it would attach through whatever browser you're using i think mine works with firefox for example um, yeah. that would then give you a button i believe that you would be able to click on mm -hmm. and then be able to generate that yeah, yeah. it keeps it's a nice it's a nice starting place um and then you know i like to go on and elaborate within my bios um, personally i like doing it by hand though because i inline yeah, yeah. i do inline citations so that's how i right. write right starting point and then and then you go on from there right. you go from well, there you, can, you, you learn can... everybody learns yeah everybody has a personal style mm -hmm. um so um we'll we'll see in just a second where some of this information came from um uh but you know basic uh, biographical information, um, his residency, red places where he resided, marriage. Uh, clearly, these two are coming from the census, 1850, and 10 years later, that's got to be census information. Mm -hmm. There uh, it is. Yeah. Um, so the most important thing with, and so Steve just mentioned inline citations. So if you're not familiar with those, it's this Oh, David um, is joining us. Yeah, great. Um, it's this uh, aspect where um, you can see the uh, the citation. And actually, because I have the browser extension, it pops up. I don't have to necessarily scroll down. And if see. you click on it, it will take you to that source yeah, directly at the bottom of the page, too. But it's nice if you're if it's a longer bio to just be able mm -hmm. to to hover over the two and see, oh, okay, you know, it's like mm -hmm. census. And, and that utilizes basic HTML. Mm -hmm. So I understand that and everyone's well versed in that. And that's something that people can do if they wish to get involved. But inline citations are not required. It certainly makes it a lot cleaner for citing information though if you do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the other way of, of your citations would be to just write your bio, and then um, under sources, you would just have bullet points for yeah. all your mm -hmm. um, But then it, you know, it's not as clear how you're supporting this fact with that mm -hmm. citation. So yep. um, that's why um, that's why inline citations are, are a little bit cleaner. Mm -hmm. um, so the key thing on these uh, four citations is they allow us to go and check the information ourselves. So um, family search is, is, a, is free and available. So um, you know anyone can click on these links and, and see the censuses for themselves. Um, find a grave as well is, is open. Um, ancestry links are a, a little more problematic, but now that there's this, the, um, the Sorcerer app, um, you can create um, a citation for an ancestry source where you can at least share like a view of the uh, of the, whatever the material is. So that's very handy. Um, sometimes there are things that are only available on ancestry and not on family search. Um, but the fourth thing that this person used um, is this town history. And so um, I've if you click through on this, I'm, I've already I've already clicked on it. I'm going to just take us to the page. Um, it takes us to the actual book itself on the Internet Archive. And well, my eyes aren't that good. I mean, You're going to have to zoom in on this one. <laughs> yep, for sure, for sure. Oh, dear. Wait a minute. Okay. Um, 
I where is my zoom button? Can you use your scroll wheel to do it? Or there the there oh. we go. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can you can see there he is down at the lower right, his entry, um, Josiah Knight, and you can see that whoever did the biography basically copied the information from this book. Um, and also the other thing that I mm -hmm. I noticed that's, that's that the power cord for the computer because I was going to move from here because I didn't want to have the TV. Oh, okay. I've turned off the sound, but um, oh, they may be getting my sound, and I don't know. Hello. <laughs> or Steve, can you mute? Uh, I can't see the crowd, but there's 17 people in here now, so I'm going to have to go back to the, uh, the list. I'll have to leave um, screen share for a second. Okay. I think it's calmed down. I think we're okay. okay. Great. Thanks. Um, so I'll, you all... I'll move this in the other room. Just... I don't want Just, them to pick up the TV. One moment. I don't want them to pick up the TV if I turn on the sound. Hmm. Can we ask everybody who's watching okay. if they can mute? Thank you. Okay. Um, so um, Josiah's entry is actually divided onto two pages. So um, if we go on to the second page, um, we see it's pr pretty comprehensive family genealogy. We've got all the children. I noticed that not all of the children are listed on the WikiTree profile. I think it ends at Caroline. So there are a few who are missing. Um, and so it's really nice having the whole book here, um, especially say you were Josiah Knight's uh, descendant and you really wanted to dig into things. You could um, uh, look at, uh, you know, look through the whole book and see about uh, friends, neighbors, and associates and that sort of thing. So that's what you want to keep in mind with your citations is that um, you want to, you want to allow other researchers to be able to, to retrace your steps and, and see why you're making the assertions you are. Um, this is another feature of the Wikitree browser extension. Um, these are, are, um, things that um, other we, other pages that link here. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's we, actually a feature of MediaWiki. It's just that the app actually accesses that data. Normally, the data is not present to people on WikiTree because mm -hmm. they modified it that way. So that, that's, that's a special thing that won't normally show up on most profiles. Mm. Um, oh, yeah. Remember I said at the, at the beginning that uh, I noticed the, that the the person who entered the birth information said it was uncertain. And, and here's a comment from the profile mm -hmm. manager um, addressing that. Could not find any birth record for him in Sudbury. Um, now, it's a little unusual that the profile manager would put it as a comment. This might be something where you would want to put a section called research notes between mm -hmm. biography and sources and just put that, that um, tidbit there for either for you or some other researcher to come back to. That could still be done after the fact, though, right? If that person oh, can yeah. be cited, that could be entered into research notes by someone else, correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I'm glad you said that. Um, the other thing to note about this profile is it's it's an open profile. And uh, so that means that any Wikitreer who has signed the, the honor code uh, can can go ahead and, and make changes. We'll see. Yeah, great. We well, 20 participants right now. Yeah, yeah. Welcome. I know I recognize some of the names of folks coming in. Welcome and, and thanks for thanks for joining on tonight. So before we move on to Richard's uh, profiles, uh, do we have any questions about what we just looked at? And you can put them in the chat or you can speak you can now unmute yourself yeah uh, i have a question so you talk about the wiki extension i don't really like extensions um i think it muddles up things on the computer mm -hmm. but how do you go about getting the extension yeah um let's see it's been a while since i got mine steve do you do you remember oh I, boy Lori, which which browser do you use? The browser I that I use. 
Oh, her. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I, I am still old fashioned here. I refuse to go to edge for whatever reason. So I'm trying to find what it's. Um, yeah, I don't use edge either. So I'm right there with you. Yeah, I'm, whatever the old one is, I can't remember what it is. Oh, right you mean now. Internet Explorer? That's it. Okay, I would recommend maybe not using that one, but that's my own personal opinion. Uh, not using I use that Firefox one. myself. That that's the one that I use that has access to these. Um, what what I'm going to do um, is, or maybe maybe Steve, could you find the um, the uh, help page for WikiTree browser, browser extension? Uh, yes, I will. Uh, I, I I just posted a link. Ah. Oh, the, yes, um, there it is. Murray just posted the link. There you Wiki, go. WikiTree Thank browser you. extension. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. And um, it, it was pretty painless to, to install. Um, and I've had it. I've been using it for maybe four or five, four or five months. And it, I haven't had any problems with it. So, just one person's opinion. Um, so uh, let, me, let me look at the, the questions that we have so far. Um, I've answered Linda's question in the chat as well. OK. OK, so Ruth has, is working, did a JEDCOM in import. OK. And it looks like uh, Marsha Hicks has her hand up. Oh, OK. Marsha, yes, go ahead. Yeah, um, so I have a question about, um, I've seen on a couple of um, profiles where uh, there's been, a, and some comments made about where to put uh, find a grave, um, uh, whether you put it in sources or whether you make like C above mm -hmm. and put it there because it's not really considered a primary source. Exactly. So uh, is that kind of a, I mean, is that kind of a, a situation where you, you know, well, well, what, is it kind of a one way or the other kind of thing or what, what yeah. should we do with that? I've been, I've been doing it um, um, C also and put it in at the bottom rather than actually putting it in with the sources. Yeah. Can I comment on this one here? Yes. Mm -hmm. Go for it. Uh, so I, I do use Find a Grave a lot. I understand it's not a primary source for a lot of the data. So a lot of people like to source it on birth and death dates and things like that. I cite it mainly as burial location. And mm -hmm. I actually type in that it's for burial because I'm still looking for a death record. I'm still looking for a birth record. And as we all know, the dates on gravestones may not be correct. Correct, you know, they, right. That might be exactly. what somebody submitted to them and they put right. it on the gravestone. So it's a clue, um, but I'd still put it in sources for burial information because you know if you tag your uh, category with a cemetery category, mm -hmm. it's basically telling you which cemetery that they're in. So that's the source for that. And okay. I don't think I don't think we can debate the cemetery as much as long as there is a, a stone there, unless it's a cenotaph, like a cenotaph is one that right. says, right, OK, uh, you okay. know, it's recognizing them, but they may not be buried there. Those are the only exceptions. Okay. Well, that makes sense um, to put it um, if, if if you're using it as a burial location that, you know, mm -hmm. as, a, as a source for that, that makes sense. But for everything that's, else, that's it's how kind I approach of, it. OK, OK, if that you're trying sense. to use it as a source for birth and death, that's where it gets weird. And right. I would really look for the records of that case, unless there's no records available. And that's the yeah. only thing we got. Right. OK. OK, thanks. No problem. Yeah. OK. All right. Um, well, um, uh, Richard, are you ready to to look at uh, your profiles with us? Sure, yes. And, and it's interesting, because I, I came to Wikitree because I was actually looking for what may be a broken link in my family tree. Um, and I'll have to do some more research in that regard. But what I did find is that my immediate family, my father and his family are not listed precisely or accurately. So I wanted to mm -hmm. learn how to make corrections like that. Um, the first thing that is most glaring, I think, is if you look at the Profile McCluskey M C C L U S K E Y dash eight ninety two. Hang on, I'm all right. There, this this is the one. Your your paternal grandfather, correct? Uh, no, That's eight eight four, right? Oh, eight ninety two. Eight ninety two. 
I have it listed here as 888. Oops, 892 does not. Maybe not that? under that formatting. It, it might be McCluskey one word. It is one word. Did you have the, they had them separated? Yes. Yeah, they're not supposed to be separated. Okay. That's one of the things to correct that I Let's made see. as a correction to that. What is your, what is the uh, individual's name? Uh, it's listed as Richard A, as in Alan McCluskey, mm -hmm. Richard A. a. McCluskey. Okay. Because at least this way they'll find variations. Uh, Richard Allen. Nope, yeah. not that one. No. The one just below it. That one. 892. Uh -huh. Yes. Yep. Right. And um, so I noticed that um, this has the same profile manager uh, as for your um, paternal grandfather. Yes. Uh, and I've been, Don has been in contact with me and we're getting things squared away. So he basically said, just go ahead and do what you need to do. Yep. So that was nice yep. of him. Absolutely. Um, so if you look at father of John Hugh McCluskey, mm -hmm. that is actually John Hugh McCluskey the third. That's my cousin. Okay. His father is John Hugh McCluskey uh, Jr., not Richard A. McCluskey. Oh, so you've got some untangling to do. Okay, exactly. Yeah. And I would have just gone slapdash and done it all, but I want to document everything as I go. And my difficulty was finding birth certificates, death certificates, that sort of thing. Right. Um, how do you do that without going to the counties and paying $8.95 for each one and waiting three months for them to respond? Right. Could, could I take us back to, uh, to this profile? Because I, I was looking at this profile uh, last night and it looks to me like, uh, hmm, I wonder, have ancestry happened on this? Aha, Don was on this page today because it, uh, it looks very different from what I saw last night. The sources are all tidied up. You use the AGC uh -huh, extension. Nice. nice. And so, um, some of you had had been asking uh, Ruth and and um, Linda were wondering about um, JEDCOM um, automatic import of of sources. And so what Steve is mentioning now, AGC. Well, Steve, you wanna you wanna talk about it a little bit? Oh, I mean, this might be getting a little more advanced, but again, it's another extension. It basically cleans up the data that comes out of JEDCOMs because a lot of the JEDCOM data will just appear like a bunch of cited numbers that don't go anywhere. Uh, I believe the AGC extension cleans it up and turns it into text. So it does try to make it look more biographical in that case. Uh, you know, so, so if you're trying to clean up a lot of JEDCOM junk uh, that comes out of those uploads, you know, that is something that's beneficial to use. Uh, and I believe that's already built into, I'm trying to remember where that comes from. I, do you have to have an external extension to get that to populate or is that part of uh, Wikitree now? It might be part of Wikitree, the browser extension. Yeah. Because if it's part of Wikitree, then nobody has to worry about a separate extension for it. Yeah. Um, I don't. I rarely use it though, because I rarely deal with JetCom. Mm -hmm. But there's the yeah, there's a page, uh, the G2G to post. I'm getting it. Are you did someone get it already? Yeah. And there's a space what, page link right there. What is JEDCOM? Oh. Okay. What are JEDCOMs? Well, yeah, I mean, this is this is one reason why I think that it is it is a little more advanced topic, but it is appropriate to an audience of new wiki treers because uh, it's an entry point for a lot of new wiki. How, how can I explain this the best? So a lot of times people will build their trees on other sites like Ancestry and they will export them as a JEDCOM. So they'll keep all the connections that they made on that site and then they will dump it onto another site like Wikitree. Problem is that you know a lot of the data won't convert over into text, and so it'll just be, like I said, a, a lot of these artifacts that'll show up. So that's where the JEDCOM cleanup comes in. Uh, so so that it's an easy way for people to add stuff to WikiTree. However, you have to go through every profile, and you may have to clean up all of those profiles up. So I I'm the kind of person that avoids GenComs. I upload 
uh, articles or profiles one by one, ensuring that the data is accurate and that at least I have one source on there and then I can go back later and add more if I need to. So I, I'm just a person that doesn't use GEDCOM for that reason. Mm -hmm. But other people have already worked on their trees for so long, they feel that GEDCOM is the best option for them. So that's that's why these things exist. Does that help answer your question? It certainly does. Thank you. Okay, yeah. no problem. Yeah. Yeah, I think that once if you do it once, you'll recognize what a what a train wreck it is. Um, <laughs> it is such a mess. I mean, if you're gonna trains. do it, it's not a bad way to get started for maybe two or three generations. But boy, I tell you, you don't want to do any more than that because it gets messy really fast. Yeah, if you, you want to keep people. the intake. If you want to keep the integrity of the of the wiki tree, which is really important and really is the most wonderful feature uh, of this uh, of this site. What uh, feature is? That it's one family tree that oh, you okay. can connect to people all over. I, I, it's just phenomenal to me. I really appreciate it. Gotcha. Thank you. Goodcoms also have the danger of duplicating profiles that are already on WikiTree. So if they don't get verified, they don't get merged. And so then we have to find those profiles and, and merge them after the fact. So that, that is another issue that GEDCOM can present if someone decides to simply dump. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And like David is indicating, you can't dump things like pictures, documents. You have to upload those things separately to do that. Right. And of course, the other thing that we should mention with pictures is um, WikiTree is very strict about um, asking members to follow cop respect copyright. And yeah. so you, unlike on Ancestry, where you might get a hint that, oh, this is your great grandmother and you can just scoop it up into your own profile for that individual, um, that's a no-no on WikiTree. Right, um, and they also operate under contract law too. So technically they own that photo, at least they will claim it. Um, and that gets into a whole another thing that we don't have time for. So right. anybody wants to talk about contract law in the future, that, that could be another discussion. Um, so um, in, in going back to Richard, to your question about how do you get the, the um, the information. Um, there's a really helpful feature on all profiles down, it's on the right hand side, um, about halfway down, and it's this root search. And you click on that, it may oh, yeah. ask you to enter in your login credentials for Wikitree a second time. And just do that and and uh, and then you'll be up and running. Um, down at the bot, so it pre pre-fills in all the information that you've already have on your ancestor. And then you can select um, whether you, well, let's, let's just see what, uh, what ancestry has. So. I'm responding to someone in chat, by the way. Sure. Um, so you can see the census, uh, then your, oops, I don't like this feature. Um, if you if you scan up, I believe it said John E. McCluskey, which is not correct. John at the top. Yeah. John. Oh, this one. Well, this is this is just um, clues of other ancestry trees. Oh, okay, okay. And then if you go below, then you're seeing actual records. So we have a census. We have a uh, this the the wife's name is the same are correct so we we know we have a hit here with this draft card um uh that that uh, draft card is for his son not his oh okay but it's the right family it's the correct family that's right and and the relative there alberta for the draft card mm -hmm. that is um alberta's well that that's all mixed up i i don't think my grandfather was Drafted into, uh, I don't think he was drafted. He was a merchant marine. He wasn't drafted into mm. the U.S. military. My uncle, um, his son with the same name, mm -hmm. junior rather than senior, um, enlisted. I don't think he was drafted. Well, he may have still had to register, though. Even though it says draft card, I think they still had to register That's up a to a certain up to a certain age. Yeah. So it may have just been a, um, a, you know, a registration card. 
even though it says draft card, you'd have we'd have to look at that and see. So, so let me just since we talked about sorcerer, um, we could we could click on that, and um, you know I, so I nineteen oh one birth date. Oh well, that would be my grandfather's yeah. age. There yeah. at that age, does it that say forty on the card itself? It's well, it's dated nineteen forty two, so it looks like it might just be a registration card. Okay. Yeah, that would be my grandfather's card. So that is so it's March 16th, card. 1901, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oakland, Oklahoma. Yeah, yeah. Um, so when you're on this page, so you can see that I have this little one. Does everybody see that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that that's my, my um, sorcerer extension. Um, so if I click on that, and this is another way, by the way, to, to search uh, various websites. But if I go down to build inline citation, click on that. And now it's on my clipboard. Then I go back and I'm wondering, I'm wondering if this is, no, it doesn't look like, um, like Don had already doesn't look like it's in there. Mm -mm. You're right. Good. Okay. Well, then let's. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add it. So it's an inline citation. So let's see. What was the date on that draft? 1942. Thank you. Okay. In 1942, John. Registered for um, military, and of course you can go back and change this later. Uh, military service, um, and then I'm just going to there. Um, and so I just copied in, and it gives a, an ancestry sharing link. So if we um, go to preview, we can see what that looks like. So in 1942, John registered for, oh, I'll take that the out, for military service. And you can see that uh, you're gonna get this sharing link. So the pre preview button is very handy. Um, I will just change that okay and then i added sources i improved the bio full save so um and someone else was asking uh, i think linda i think your question got answered by david but um this is where you would look for the profile uh privacy level and there's so this is this is the least restricted level uh, and then because the person has passed away for so long mm -hmm. and uh, profiles after 150 years are, are definitely open profiles. Right. Yeah. So let me give an example of, of where I got hung up. And the first thing I wanted to do was begin on this page where you started um, and then work forward to um, building his sons correctly and then my cousin incorrectly after that. Um, I got hung up on trying to find a death certificate for my grandfather. Uh, I think I, for, for this gentleman who, who's yes. born, I could have sworn I saw one. Um, let's just go back for a second. Um, no, now you're making me nervous. If you had a hard time. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. A death, there's a death index, is that it? Santa Cruz? Yeah, that that's what I'm looking for. That would have been correct, yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay, there it is on Ancestry, just an index. So you still would, but this this is sufficient for, for um, you know, for stating your facts. And then for your personal interest and, and records at home, if you wanted to, you know, pay the $8.95 and get the actual death certificate, you could do that. But 
There it is. And it also gives mother's maiden name. Does that look correct? I'm sorry, where? Thompson. Oh. Yes. Uh -huh. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, but I think I'm, if you go back to his profile, I don't think that date is listed, is it? Well, let's see. Um, no. So, so that means, let's see. Okay. Don didn't, didn't do anything with that. So let's, let's go ahead and add that. So we're going to come back here. We're going to, so it's birthday, February 8th, 1963 in Santa Cruz. Build inline citation. Um, okay. So death date, 8 February 1963. Now we're certain Santa Cruz. And then find the right place in the bio. Say that John died in Santa Cruz in 1963. And there, there's our, uh, there it is. So I, I just have a comment. What's kind of interesting with these sites is it's including a lot of data that could be actually included in the biography. I think I would have, have a, a tendency to move the date, the data out mm -hmm. of the site and into the biography. Like, could you give me an example? The mother's maiden name or something or oh yes yeah. yeah just like with on the draft on the draft it was incredible because it had all his it has its height and weight and all mm -hmm. kinds of other stuff mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which most people wouldn't go to a to a site citation to take a look at that right but then what i would do because i i'm always i i am very very strict about looking at an original source like the census if if it's available to me um and i squeeze every little fact out of it um if you were to include all those details in the bio then you could do you know you could cite that source um so there's a way to um, if you're repeatedly sourcing the same record for say five five different facts, you can you can do that um, repeated source thing. You basically you give the source a nickname so that you don't have to enter it in with all the details every single time. You could just um, say nickname draft record ref ref name equals draft record, and then you would you would cite draft record each of those times. And uh, and it would, you know, because you do want to you do want to back everything up that you're saying in the bio. Um, that that conversation might be a little bit advanced for the purposes of tonight, but um, you're right. There's there's a lot of information to be mined from from these records. Now, I know you're relying on Ancestry.com. That's a pretty expensive thing to be doing for yes. somebody. Yes. Um, is, that, is that like a necessity? Do, do we really have to be connected with Ancestry.com to get this work done? No. So, in fact, let's let me get out of here. And uh, let's do a, a search on Family Search, which is free. And let's see what what is what is there for your grandfather. Oh, okay. Sometimes it takes a while. Oh, you have to log back in, don't you? <laughs> While we're doing that, can I make an observation about about what you just did in the, in terms of adding the uh, footnotes? Yes. Yes. Um, I noticed I noticed that you put the footnote before the, the sentence ending period. And as a, as a, as a, um, a 40 year writer and editor, 
Mm -hmm. I'd like to suggest to you that they belong after the period. Oh, okay. Wait, did um, you put the citation before the period? Yeah, I, I was gonna. Yes. I was gonna make the same comment because oh, I've yeah. I've always put it after the period yes. as well. So. It should be after the period. Yeah. Okay, that's probably yeah. just an oversight. It, it's probably yeah. just small oversight. All right, I will. Yeah, I just wanted to observe. Thank you. Well, I always want to do it, follow best practice. So yeah, thank you. All right, keep me signed in. Yes. For two weeks, but it won't. <laughs> <laughs> right, I could have sworn I, mean, I did this lesson. Too. I know, I know. I have to. It seems like I have to do it every time too. Early search can be glitchy. <laughs> so okay, here, so we, find. here we go. We've got the same death record. Let's see if it's any more beautiful. So, yeah, so, so it is an index. It's the same. Yeah. Well, that's his mother's name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, well, it's interesting here too. Even though it's the death record, it does indicate a birth date which is also not on his profile at the moment. And that could be used as a birth date source. The deaf record mm -hmm. happens to have it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. If I go back to, let's see. Right. So we don't have a birth date. About 1901 is what they said. So that does that mean we can update it now? Yes. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so family search is really nice in that um, you don't That's need to start. All you have to do is. That's successful. Talk. Successful research turns into results. Yes. Copy the citation. All right. Let's see. The birth date is March 16th. March 16th, 1901. Okay. March 16, Mar. So we have a certain formatting, of course, for writing dates. Mm -hmm. Get to say that it's certain. I think we're we're certain that it is Oklahoma. It would be really nice to narrow narrow it down. down. Yeah. Location. Yeah. And then we can now come here. You still keep that one intact. Right. Better. It's fine to have multiple sources backing things up. Okay. So it looks like we do have a couple of th things. There's looks like there is a birth record. Okay. And now we're going to add ours. So um, notice that I press C for cite your source and it, it gives me the ref tags. And now I'm going to just copy the death index in there. And really, did the did the end? I just have to wonder. I don't want to do anything. Did did the ancestry version of the death index also give the birth date? Mm -hmm. because, because now are we doing duplicate? Are we naming the same source twice? Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't remember if it had the birth date on there. Can you go back to look at it? Yeah, I think it did. Um. Upper, yeah. Ancestry, okay. Oh, I think he's passed it. It, it did. It did give the birth date. Yeah. So now, yep. yeah. So that's not great that we've duplicated it. So let's let's see if I can do this off the top of my name, off top top of my head. Steve, are you you do you use multiple? Uh, citations often um yeah if i need to nest if i need to use a certain one multiple times yeah i'll put in ref name and then i will actually create a unique identifier for right. that citation it has, has to be mm -hmm. in quotes right ref name equals right equals quotations and whatever that is close the quotation close the um the carrot nope nope you can't have a space in there What? No, no space. That's in right. The, in the that name. that can't have a space. Th those have to be all together. So you okay. can just put in death. Death works. Okay. And all then right. you had another one that needed to use death. Yes. You, you would just repeat then, it. But usually, yeah. if uh, you're citing the birth date in the death record, I would recopy the entire death index citation and make sure that that's complete on the top. And then I would use the secondary ref name at the bottom that that's like just got the forward slash and the right. end carrot. 
So, so that right. way you're just citing it again, but you're not citing like the whole thing again. Exactly. So yeah. again, this is this is all HTML shortcut stuff that I understand it might be a, you know complicated. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure how well versed everyone is on HTML here in the chat mm -hmm. <laughs> or wiki markup for that matter, <laughs> which is the, the brackets and, and you know, the, the bolding and those basic features that we have on our wiki. So okay. learning wiki script is one thing, learning HTML is another. Yeah. And I have to say, um, this is, no. that does not look right. Hey, no, you need a space slash and then the closing angle bracket. Yes. All oh, right, you have to take With out double, double, double uh, quote after the double quote. Put in a space and then and then a slash. Space slash close angle bracket. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gre greater than sign and then get rid of the red, the end graph. Yeah, right, go. right. Who is being so helpful to me? Thank you. This, this is Murray Maloney speaking. Oh, thank you, Murray. <laughs> yes, thank you, Murray. <laughs> okay. Um, yes, you know, for those of you who are not comfortable with wiki markup um and i i've gained some comfort but i'm nowhere near um where where steve or apparently murray are um, i've only I, been I, editing wiki since 2004 so yeah you know, that's just my background i have a cheat sheet i have a google doc which <laughs> You know, I, I, I write down like a successful formula. And then when I go to do something like this, I, I'm always consulting it. Um, so don't be afraid to do that. Now we're going to preview and see if this worked. Okay. Are we willing to share that, Doc? Absolutely. Yes. Um, it looks like it's citing it correctly. Uh, one, two, three at the beginning. And then three is repeating. Uh, you just want to get that period <laughs> in front of the three right, and the other right. three. <laughs> okay. um, we can always come back and clean this up afterwards. Yes, yeah. So yeah. John, so here we can see I used the death index to cite his birthday of March 16th. And that's reference three. And then here it is. Ta-da. Mm -hmm. And then if you go to the bottom, you'll see it's been cited twice. Right. Shows right. up as 3.0 exactly. and 3.1. Right. <clears throat> and On I'm, that first entry as well, you can you can eliminate the word about now that we have. Oh, good point. Decided yeah. that true. 1901 is accurate. Right. That you can actually type in the uh, the date itself, March 16th. Mm -hmm. Well, 16, right? <laughs> yep. Although no, six, I, I tend, 16 I, March. I tend to not put the uh, specific dates <laughs> in the narrative. <laughs> Um, yeah, I know the different projects all have um, um, different sort of style practices with that. Um, okay, and I'm going to make things right with my period here. <laughs> Done. Okay. We're all going to leave WikiTree now because we didn't put the period <laughs> in the right spot. <laughs> So what I could say now, when I go to my, of course, you can't, you can't change, save without saying what you did. We added a source, we improved the bio, and I made a minor correction with my period. And then it allows me to do the full save. So, and I will definitely share my cheat sheet with you. Now that we have uh, the free space page for, for the Zooms, um, that can be a clearinghouse for information like that. So I'll make sure that I, I add it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. There was a curiosity I noticed down in the lower right page on the profile, mm -hmm. referencing the big McCluskey book. Oh, uh, well, I think that's when I'm further up, right? Right there, down a bit. Research, a little collaboration. <clears throat> oh, it's not there now. No, Where yeah, I know that? what you're talking about. You have okay. to be in edit mode. Oh, uh -huh. yeah, those are examples. Yeah. yeah. That's for f formatting. Yeah. Uh, so they'll, they'll automatically put in like the McCluskey farm. Like that doesn't actually exist. 
but it's, it's just giving you like, an idea. Whatever surname of the profile. Oh, okay. So there isn't really a big McCluskey yeah. book for me to refer to. No, but, I was rather exciting for a moment. I, there, I imagine you would be. The big co book, the big Greenwood book. Yeah, everyone <laughs> will have that book there. <laughs> we all hope that we have a book, but. <laughs> And a very, very helpful thing. Like I went into edit mode and now I have no edits to make. So just, I'm gonna to return to profile without saving. Ta-da. Yeah. Uh, now we just need um, to get some parents. Yeah, yeah, well, uh, we already know mother's maiden name, which is a big deal. And that comes from that source that came from the yeah. deaf record. Yeah. So that can be used on her profile. Right. Um, so I feel like before time escapes too much more from us, um, Linda had questions about attaching, uh, civil war stickers. Yes. Uh, Linda, are you still there? Let's see if she's still with us here. Linda, iPad. Okay. Linda's iPad. I was muted. Oh, okay. Great. Great. Um, so, okay. Um, so do you wanna give us a profile to look at or do you just wanna, I can show you, I do have one ancestor who is, uh, let's see, here he is. Eugene, Eugene Harry Menzi served in the Civil War. And so, is this the sort of thing that you're hoping to do? Yes. Yes. Okay. So where you want to go is, I have too many tabs open. Mm -hmm. uh, this, I'm going to put this in the chat. There's the, the, um, the template page. Um, and have you used stickers at all, Linda? No. Ah, okay. So we'll we'll go in and look at my um my my um example and see how it looks. So basically you can um stickers use double curly brackets. And so here, you know, basically this is what you want to copy and paste, and it's gonna come out like this. But you have to, you know, fill in your own information. You can for, modify it. Yeah. And that would be the best thing. Simply copying and pasting in this case would work. There is also a way to create templates off the template creator. Uh, it'll ask for information and produce them that way. But I, I do think this is the easiest way to mm -hmm. go ahead and create one. So if you we, can see the parameters, what they do at the bottom too. Right. If we go to... Um, my ancestor and then i go in edit mode this you know this is another really good trick is if you see a sticker that you would like to use you can always go into edit mode on another profile and grab the code assuming that it's editable of yeah. course right right um, if it's locked you may not be able to access this you just have to find a different one uh, you can use the profile for civil war people and and just find one within the prof uh, the the category, so you mm -hmm. can go to the category for Civil War and find them that way as well. But none so of the under the, the Civil templates. War, oh, go ahead. Well, all the people in, all the people who were in the Civil War are are 150 years dead by now, right? Right, right. Should so be. there should be no issue with with um, profiles being locked. Someone might still decide to lock a profile for their own reasons, though. So, I mean, so that, yeah. that's going to be less rare in this case because they have been deceased for a while. You may not run into that issue. Yeah, that's so. True. I am guessing under the templates, there's probably a list of templates. I know there's one for the DAR that recently I would heard about, so I, I wouldn't mind using that. How do you get to that? Sure. Let Let me just finish what I'm doing here, and then okay. I will take us back to that page and retrace my steps. Um, so one really important point about stickers is you want to make sure that you put them below the biography, so below this heading. Um, okay. so you can see that actually um, my ancestor, he has a 
a sticker um, to show that he's part of the uh, the Menzi clan. And then here is his Civil War sticker. Um, and, you know, I entered in the the dates, the side that he was on. Um, there's a there's a whole there's a whole list of flag options um, on WikiTree, and you wanna you wanna try and make sure you're using the right flag for the right time, the right date that you're talking about, um, if possible. It can get a little messy, frustrating, challenging. Um, and and there, there it is now. Preview doesn't work as beautifully with stickers, I find. Um, so sometimes you need to actually save and see what it's done. Um, again, I'm going to return without saving. And um, so, um, yeah, I, I would highly recommend looking at other profiles that have stickers that you like or want and, and just having a look. And a great way to look at random profiles is, where's, where's random profile if you- Random right there, go down. Yeah, right there. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's if, relatively new. Yeah, if you have the, the browser extension, you can, you can add it to your personal menu, but otherwise go under find and just random profile. Let's see where we land, wow. Just oh, this looks like a wow, a very nice, uh, nice bio. So it can be sort of interesting. To just uh, spin the wheel, dip your hand in the jar, see what you come up with. Um, so Lori, back to your question. If I okay, so how did I get here? Okay, so I went to uh, the help page for stickers. So I think that's that's a really good place. Let me give that give that to you. Um, chat. Okay, that's a good starting place. And um, it will give you a bit more um, technical information. Um, did you wanna try and find the DA? I, we can look for the DAR sticker if you'd like. Um, I have a DAR sticker on my profile. Oh, just I just added it recently. Let me look and see. Yeah. See, uh, if C category it, stickers, because it's not under DAR, it's under I think it's under societies or something like that. Hmm. Um, if I had a hard time finding it, and I remember when I was first looking for it. There are a lot of stickers. Society ancestor, society member. I think that would be it, society member. There we go. Uh -huh. Find it? Yep. Yep. So all, all kinds of bling that you can put on. Yeah. Um, and when in doubt, if you can't find it through the categories, you can always go to search should be able to search any page on Wikitree. It might do an external Google search to do it, but mm -hmm. yeah, there are definitely a, a ways of finding this information. Right, at, at the bottom of every page, you know, I'm just on this society member sticker page, but all the way at the bottom, you can you can search for anything. And it's, it's once you get comfortable with using, using it, this tool, it, it's very helpful. What I find about WikiTree, it's mm -hmm. really because it, you're, it's very, it's HTML based. Most people don't have that exposure and right. it's mm -hmm. pretty technical for somebody to just dive in and use it. <laughs> I mean, it took me a long time to feel comfortable just to put the ref and brackets and the ref with the backslash at the end of each site and mm -hmm. then understand how it worked. But uh, there's some complexity to it that, um, you know, it might be helpful to have a class on that. <laughs> right, right, absolutely. And I think um, 
for me, I, you know, I didn't come in with this background, but um, just wiki training a little bit Sorry. every day, you know, Sorry. repeatedly, you know, doing doing the same actions was very helpful for me, you know, and you do get, and recognizing also that there's really nothing that you, no mistake that you can't back your way out of. You, you can't break wiki tree. <laughs> you know, it's so, so experiment and, and try and see what you come up with um, and ask for help. Um, any, anyone who wants, uh, you know, I will, if you ever um, have questions, you can always post it on the new member zoom free space page, and I'd be happy to get back to you. And um, projects, the projects that have a, like a training opportunity, like England has the Orphan Trail, um, Scotland has the Tartan Trail, Canada has a training um, um, module. Those are really great because then you're paired with a mentor and they sort of help you get over the hump of the initial learning curve. Yeah. I will also link to this how-to page. It, I found this is somewhat beneficial for people. So I'm just going to link this into the chat it also goes through some you know bigger steps like and maybe some basic steps how to edit a profile how to manage your watch list how to join the community and start doing events and things like that so uh that is available to people in five languages uh mm -hmm. and that might be helpful for everyone so and i w i wanted to mention too is i just reached out and asked for a mentor i i just found one and emailed her and she said yeah. sure and so we've just been you know she got on my trusted list on a couple of my profiles and she just like you know we've been emailing back and forth and she says oh you know you need to do this and of course you know about the things about the um the html stuff which i didn't have any idea what what that was and right. so and and like you said just do a little bit each day and you because you oh you kind of get you know get the mm -hmm. hang of it after a while you've done it you know so many times and you know, a couple of times it's like, oh, I forgot the little doohickey thing and, you know, I didn't put it in the right place or I forgot the space or something. And, you know, so and she just like, you know, we've just been emailing back and forth and every day it gets a little easier. So, so, so that's been really helpful for me. So, yeah, so. that's, that's a great, I forgot about mentors and, and that could be a great way to go if you're, if you don't want to join a specific project, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's more generalized. Well, I thought that, I mean, I probably will eventually, but I thought that one might be a little too overwhelming at first to, is to, to kind of be committed to a project. So right. I just kind of wanted to get my my tree a little bit more, yeah. you know, um, under my belt first before I started. There's no obligation to join any yeah. kind of project. Yeah, you just I know. Feel like you, yeah. yeah, if you want to just contribute to your own stuff, that's perfectly fine. A lot of people do yeah. that. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. And, and, um, when I first joined Wikitree, I, to me, it felt like entering this vast, like castle, not even a mansion, like a castle with a hundred rooms. And I sort of felt paralyzed, just like, just like I stepped in the door yeah, and yeah. I was like, I don't want to go very far because I'm going to get completely lost. And so, you know, go, you cannot, you can't get yeah, it is. I did. I did. I felt really overwhelmed for, yeah. when I first started. And so I, I like, and, and I stopped for you know, actually probably a couple of years mm -hmm. and then I kind of dabbled a little bit. And then I thought, no, I, you know, I'm tired of ancestry. I just want to do something that's just one person for, you know, one profile for each person. And so I just, you know, a month or so ago, I just said, nope, I'm just going to stick with this and, and just dig in and really learn it. So that's kind of where I've been. So, you know, so great. I'm glad you came back. That that happen. actually is a really common thing. You know, people yeah. sign up and then they go, whoa, <laughs> and yeah. then sort of come back, hopefully. Yeah. So yeah. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. So I just you know, 94 one the first worldwide print. So the you're breaking up. But, Do you want to type your question in the chat? I'll, I'll try to answer oh, it no. there too. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Sorry about that. Sorry about the disconnect. We were hearing like every third word. 
I, I have a question. What, how do you, if you're like brand new, brand new, you open it up and go, oh. so, yeah. so how do you, I, I mean, normally in, in genealogy, you start with yourself. So you put yourself in. Right. And then um, usually it's like second or third generation, you might find a family member. So mm -hmm. what I've been telling people, because I know a lot of people that have never done anything with this, is that you always do a search first to see if the person's even in there. But um, it, it, it's easy to get fouled up because people can have something off just a little bit because there isn't like a, a sounds like or a sound, sound X where they have the, you know, they maybe changed one letter in the word. So you might not get the that person in your list that they're already listed, right? So uh, yeah, go ahead, Stephen. Funny point about that. So they just, changed how we submit information or at least we've been going through the beta of how we add new profiles and if something sounds very similar to a profile that's already on wikitree it will pro it should provide those suggestions for you to go through so that you don't end up creating a duplicate profile i think they've gotten a lot better about that in the last couple of months uh, with this new way of submitting new profiles but previously it wasn't automatically as you were entering information step by step. You basically added the information and hit the submit. And then if something came up afterwards, you know, you had to determine if it was a duplicate, um, you know, or, or it was hidden. It wasn't, it wasn't as in your face as it is now. Uh, so I, I don't know if that's going to be beneficial for, you know, you filing uh, new profiles here, but uh, I, I believe that feature is in place. So there, there's at least yeah, some semblance of that in place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that it, it captures um, individuals with close names, um, yeah. you know, with, within reason with the date. It's not perfect, of course. Not perfect, yeah. but, but it's still, it's better than nothing. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. Yeah. And, and even then, it's not the worst thing in the world. If you find profiles or duplicates, you merge them. Merge them. And then the lowest yeah. number becomes the primary number. Even if it's the worst, oh, even if it's the worst profile, because I tell you, there are some pretty bad ones out there. It's probably a GEDCOM profile. <laughs> <laughs> you have the yeah. opportunity to compare. It's just a matter of of uh, prioritizing the, the the number, the ID of the original, the earlier profile. Yeah. But well, if the the earlier misspelled profile, because that's the other issue, right? Mm -hmm. And then sometimes people just change the spelling of their name. So which which is correct? <laughs> Well, that's what the research notes are for. That's where you have to determine, yeah. is this actually the correct name? You know, do I have the source that supports this information? So, so that your research notes section would be very beneficial to anybody working on that person. So you oh, can compare my, my own mother enjoyed changing the spelling of her name from time to time, just for fun. Oh, oh that's <laughs> <Her delightful>. <laughs> Well, she, like her middle name was Catherine and she'd spell it, you know, it was Lithuanian at first, K-A-T-H-R-Y-N. And then eventually it became Catherine, you know, C-A-T-H-E-R-I-N. And then I found out her nickname, she, her nickname was Kiki when she was a kid because she danced. Then it became Kit with one T. Then it became Kit with two T's. And I go, well, what happened there? And she goes, oh, I just felt like having something different. You write them all down. <laughs> you just you take them all. <laughs> You know, you, I think there's, the field would allow mu multiple names for, yeah. for nicknames and, and right. alternative Middle spellings names. of names. Yeah. Yeah. Also known as. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. have you seen some of these royalty people that have like yeah. 20 different names attached to them? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so David Randall was just saying in the chat, after you merge, you there will be a step in the process where you look at the information on both profiles side by side and you decide what to keep. And ideally, um, if there are two active profile managers, that's a joint a conversation that's had. Um, and uh, so the resulting one profile should have the best of both. But it should be the lower number. So regardless of what information's on them, we wanna go to the lower number. So is there a court of evaluation if you have two people and they don't agree on what should go in there? Because I know I've heard about those kinds of problems on FamilySearch. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Not Problems that they have reverse. any kind of reconciliation process. You have one person that changes it to one thing, another person that changes it to another, and, and it's hard to come to a, a, an agreement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That would be uh, within problems with members. Uh, yep. There's a, there's conflict help. There There's certainly, uh, I'll just link to the page here. Okay. I, yeah, I have I was, it up right now. I was going to screen share again, but. Uh, yeah, I can. There's so the many show. resources, it's actually overwhelming. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to just, uh, those pull down menus, I shied away from them for a long time. And then I realized, oh, there's a lot of really good stuff there. So you just have to, you know, explore. Yeah, it takes time to go through all of them too, because yeah. you, I, you just kind of stumble on them and go, you know, you're reading something and you go, oh, the, okay, I can do that. Yeah. Like putting the putting your um a date and your signature in the research notes. So you just put four little what are those little tildes? Yeah, well, yeah, whatever. I don't know what yes. called. That's a good <laughs> idea. I, I, I learned that today. It's like, oh, cool. I had to go back to my one of my profiles that, that had that would be notes. the button above the tab on your computer. So right you want to hit next shift. to the number one. <laughs> yep, and there's your tilde. Yeah. yeah so and just four of those will allow you to do a signature. Right. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I learned that today. So it's like, okay, so I got to go back. Learning. A... Every day you learn something new. What do you mean do a signature? Oh, well, okay. in your research notes, if you put, if you, if, if you're, if, if it's like you're talking, you're, in, in other words, you're saying something and then you want to, so you want to put in there that, that, go ahead and show them. you know, you're, that you, you made that remark or that discovery or whatever, you want to put your name and the date in the research notes you just put four little tildes and it'll automatically put your mm -hmm. your name and your um with your wiki the number time. and the date and the time time stamp yeah yeah so here's what does that look like in the raw <laughs> it's on, on your keyboard next to the no, next no, no. To if he if he put it in edit mode what does it look like when you put it in so here's an example um so, so here's a note about a name in my family. Then in edit mode, I put four tildes, um, but this is what it ends up as. It gives my ID and then the- The, uh, hmm. the timestamp. Time. Oh, it's in military time. <laughs> yeah. UTC. I think, she, I think she wants to see what it looks like in edit yeah, mode though. Go to edit right. mode. Hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. It looks beautiful though. It's a beautiful profile. Oh, thank you um let's see research okay oh well oh, actually, just copy and paste it <laughs> but, but okay. that's because i think it's because it's already done oh it integrates so oh. like you type it in it's just right. integrates into the text yeah so okay. so once once you save it permanently then it goes in but so oh, it's well. it just looks like four little squigglies you know whoop, boop, 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 boop. Yeah. that is what it What's looks this? like right there in the chat thank I, you I, I, that's what okay. i was gonna do just Okay, I, I'm slow, so I kind of need this. Oh, that is that is effectively wiki markup because I used that on other wikis back in the 2000s. But how do you use that? Do you, you put, what do you? You, you just typed four tildes. Uh, you do you hit shift after hit after your times. profile name, uh, number or what? After the information that you're trying to say, you know, in, in this case, the research notes. So she stated a thing and she wanted people to know that she stated it. So immediately after you're done with that statement, you type oh, the four yeah. tildes okay. and then you hit save. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It does. It does seem a little bit magical, but it'll, it'll work. <laughs> yeah, These that's are what magic I thought. characters. Like, oh, it's like magic. You don't have to yeah. type your Someone name or the time or the date. Ago. It does it all automatically. It's like, cool, yeah. this is cool. So, yeah. Yeah. Someone a long time ago programmed all this stuff and that's what they <laughs> decided to use. <laughs> I know. I don't. I just like. I just. I have to give the per. The, whoever wrote all the code for all of this is a genius. That's all I can say. It's like, I mean, I'm sure there's probably more than one person, but it's it's pretty amazing how it's got works. a history. It, it goes back <laughs> decades. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're coming up on 75 minutes. Um, do any other burning questions? Um, Linda, I could I could um, quickly address you had a question about um, newspaper clippings and the answer. So the question was, how how do you add newspaper clippings such as obituaries and reference them? And the answer is 
again, because of copyright law, we cannot put up like a clipping. Um, oh. what, what we can do, let me go back um, to William Stitt. Um, and I got a lot of information from his obituary. And uh -huh. so you can see that, you know, I don't have a picture of it, but um, here is, here's my citation, which does link, provide a link to newspapers.com to the clipping. So somebody could go and look at it themselves. Okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah, you're welcome. I do have one more question. Sure. For those of you who um, who actually pay for subscription services like Ancestry.com, are there one or more that you find um, absolutely essential? I think Ancestry is is yeah. pretty essential. Yeah. I mean, if you were very active in British re the you know United Kingdom research, then I would say find my past. Um, but um, ancestry is pretty comprehensive, and I just uh, you know I I try and get the really good rate, and then sometimes I have to go off, and then I come back on when they offer me a deal again, and it's it's kind of aggravating. But mm -hmm. and if you and call you them, they will. Uh, if if you're an AARP member, they will give you a discount. Oh. Okay. But you have to call them. Oh. You have to call them and ask them for it. Yep. And you. And you do find it virtually indispensable in the work that you're doing. Is that correct? Uh, yes, I I really yes I, I okay. do. Yeah. So and the other one that you talked about, Family Search, I think it was the name of it. Yeah. That's entirely insufficient to do this work, correct? They they have different collections. So their Family Source is excellent, but there are some things that are not on Family Search that are on Ancestry. So it's, it's really nice to have access to, to what, ha what is on Ancestry. Also, FamilySearch is a collaborative tree like Wikitree, but not as stringent with integrity. Okay. And so- Hello? So, Hello? Yeah. Hello? Yeah. And FamilySearch yeah. also has um, centers that you can use and the products are all free there. So if you happen to be near one, um, I'm like 15 minutes away from one in, in the Bay Area here, and it's great. And they do classes there. Yeah. Um, it's a nice quiet spot. So you can also, yeah. you don't get disturbed <laughs> and you can really make progress. But I also try, I've been doing this for a while and I try and concentrate on doing some stuff on ancestry so I don't go crazy. You sort of have to find a pattern, either take one person through all the sites or stick with ancestry for a while. Right. And then switch over to another one. And so I, like she said about dropping paid sites, I will do Ancestry for a while, mm -hmm. drop that. While I'm waiting for a deal, I go do my heritage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Hello? Yeah. 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 Hello? 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 Um, I, I just have a, I just have a comment too. Because yes, yeah, I think some of the, oh, somebody else? Hello? Jennifer. Yeah. Yes, I just yeah. want to put Am in not my- working? Uh -oh. Can you not hear me? I can yes, hear you. Yes. Go ahead. Okay. I just well, want to put in my two cents worth. Um, I just don't like Ancestry's uh, way of doing business, mm -hmm. their lack of ethics, and just I, I just don't like them. So I I have tested DNA with them, mm -hmm. um, but I refuse to give them any more money. So I use the Hopefully library. Um, I use, um, I'm here in Washington, D.C. area, so I can go to the National Archives. Oh, lucky. Yeah. Yeah. I just find all the libraries that have access, uh, DAR. Mm -hmm. And um, I, yes, you will run into records that are only available on Ancestry. Um, but sometimes what I'll do is they'll send a hint, you know, cause they're trying to get me to resub, you know, to subscribe or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I will copy down as much information as I can. And then I'll go see if I can find it somewhere else. A lot of times yeah. I do take advantage of, um, 
uh, well, I think it's newspapers.com when they'll have specials and bold three around the holidays, like Memorial mm -hmm. Day is getting ready to yep. come up. So mm -hmm. they'll have a, you know, three days free. So I just yep. sit there and look up every single person I can think of, you know, during those free times. Mm -hmm. um, I use family search also a lot. Um, but I, I would just put in the comments to Steve that I found out the hard way about putting my trees on mm -hmm. uh, family search. It was just driving me bananas. And mm -hmm. so I only have 50 to 60 people on both sites mm -hmm. and I'm not going to add any more. Um, I might maybe with the DNA, with Ancestry, put a bare bones on there, but I purchased private software and mm -hmm. I just, mm -hmm. I just cannot mm -hmm. deal with people just adding stuff that makes no sense, marrying my grandmother to her son or something. I was just like, it, it, yeah. is, it yeah. is the wild west. It, they don't have <laughs> as stringent of oversight as we would to make sure that data makes mm -hmm. sense, you know, that the sources are going to the right places. And yeah, I will not pay money to Ancestry. I, I've never paid money to Ancestry. No. And I, I personally do not believe in paywalls because I believe this information should be freely accessible yes. to everyone. Uh, that is my two cents on the matter. And uh, I will promote WikiTree every day as the free <laughs> family tree for those mm -hmm. reasons. Yes. Uh, we will never withhold any information from anybody. So I understand it's frustrating to want to upload it again to another site. Uh, but knowing that this one, you know, being that we are pushing the single family tree, you know, in this case is the world tree, right? We're all connected to it one way or another. Uh, they don't really emphasize that on the other sites, you know, and again, they're for profit. They, you know, they're in it to make money. They, it's a different protocol. It's, it's a different approach. And we're just not like that. And that's why we're all volunteers here. You know, we just all want to help each other, really, because mm -hmm. we have more of a community, I think, than they do over at the other sites. Yeah, yeah. a lot of people are like, well, you know, if you're going to be doing this, you know, uh, as a living, you know, or helping people, you're going to have to get a subscription to Ancestry. And I said, well, maybe I will, but I will be charging yeah. people um, the membership fee, you know, what mm -hmm. will be reflected that doesn't the have to be the uh, there's mm -hmm. lots of professional genealogists that probably don't have to deal with the paywalls. They go to the sources themselves. Uh, Ancestry has just found a way to gather all these collections and lock them up behind key. Uh, and, and that's yeah, I, it's, it's very unfortunate. I like no. I said, I, I've been at the archives recently and uh, I go to the innovation hub. I don't know if you all are familiar with that. Yeah. And mm -hmm. they, you know, because of COVID, they only. Mm -hmm you know, every other desk is available for scanning. Mm -hmm. And then I noticed there was, you know, a scanner sitting over in the corner it looked perfectly good to me. And she said, oh, that's Ancestry's desk. And um, she said, you know, there was no one there at the time, but she said, oh yeah, they're working on a War of 1812 project or something, I don't know. But I was just a little irritated because I said, you know, these are... <sighs> government records and ancestry mm. is coming in because they got the bucks and the money and the manpower and the poor national archives you know can they they lost all their people during covid so they can't even get work done so they're so happy that ancestry is coming in and scanning these records and then i said oh this stuff is going to end up behind a paywall or they're going to pick and choose what they decide to scan and uh, yeah, I, I incredibly frustrating. It. And, I uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm the kind of person who, again, will promote the free access stuff. So I, I just uh, recommended Chronicling America, which is Library of Congress. Yes. Free yes. Yes. You yeah. know, those newspapers are uh, not copywritten because they're all before 1923 or 1925 now, wherever the cutoff is. Mm -hmm. uh, any, any government document, a U.S. Census, should not be copywritten at all. Now, again, with contract law, that's what Ancestry does. Yeah. They say that if it's on our website, you know, we have the rights to distribute it and everything, but they don't actually own the U.S. Census. They just, with, you know, withhold the information. Yeah. But again, FamilySearch exists. It's there. You can access it for FamilySearch for the most part. 
And if not, there's other science. So um, there was but a gentleman. Away. <laughs> yes, I know. I do the same. There was a gentleman, I think, um, earlier that said something about he couldn't find the death certificate for a grandfather or something. I I, I thought I heard that. And I kind of had the same issue. Um, a great grandfather. I had family stories that he was killed on the job, fell off a truck. Um, um, he was a city employee. So I'm thinking, oh, it's got to be written up in the newspaper or something. And I had a general date of death. but And so I went to the Library of Congress one day, newspaper division, chronicling, and I, I told the librarian, I said, I have his name, where he lived, general date of death. And his name was a fairly common name, John Rhodes. And she showed me how to look, do a search. So when I did my search, what I thought she told me I got 18,000 hits and I said mm. oh this is great what am I going to do with 18,000 hits so she came over and I swear to god she was there for like a minute typed something in drilled it down to four entries each one of those entries was my great grandfather and it was the death notice that was put in the newspaper. Mm -hmm. I still can't get a death certificate, mm -hmm. but they ran the death notice, the funeral home ran the death notice for four days. <laughs> and I and it was slightly different each time they ran it. Mm -hmm. I got the hospital, I got the name of the lodge that helped, um, you know, did a service for him. I got the church. I got the date of death, the date really of cool. burial, the date of the funeral, all from the newspaper. Mm -hmm. So I was just going to suggest to that gentleman, try searching a newspaper if you, you know, have that information. So. Well, it's great that you found that information like, that way. Yeah. Well, Thank you everyone for being with us tonight. This was this was a really invigorating and I hope I hope helpful discussion. Um, and um, we we love answering your questions and helping you feel more confident on WikiTree. Um, I'm always here to help. So you can put something on the free space page, I'll get it, or you can send me a personal message uh, at uh, I'll put my my ID in the chat. Um, if I can find the chat. Here we go. <laughs> Co thirty one. <laughs> there we go. Um, you have an easy one to remember. I know. Just two letters. <laughs> um, and I'll I'll get back to you. I promise. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank you for coming. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.